Alrighty guys, 18.4, oh baby. This one's gonna feel good. Uh, the posterior chain is just gonna be lit up. So uh, have fun with it, it's gonna burn. Uh, for 18.4, there's a couple quick things that I wanna go over and touch base with. The workout is very simple. It's two couplets, it's classic CrossFit smashed together for just a grueling workout. For the majority of people, they're going to be doing a nine minute AMRAP. This is about how far through the workout I can get in nine minutes. For some people, for kind of the, the stronger athletes or people who are looking to make it to regionals or perform really well in the open, we're looking to maximize this workout and get the best score we can. So it is either for time or it's an AMRAP, as many reps as we can get in nine minutes as possible. So keep that in mind, find out, think about which athlete you are, because that will kind of dictate how we go through these tips for you. So uh, 18.4 starts off with the first couplet of Diane. It's, I think it's really cool that he tossed in there uh, a name girl workout to start off this workout. Really cool to have that in the open, um, especially since it is a benchmark workout that many of us have done. If you have not done it as its own separate workout as a benchmark, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. Good challenge. Diane is 21, 15, nine reps of deadlifts and handstand pushups. For the scale division, you'll be doing hand release pushups. You'll do 21 deads, 21 handstand pushups, 15 deads, 15 handstand pushups, nine, nine. The second couplet will follow the same order. Then once we complete Diane, we're gonna do 21, 15, nine of deadlifts at a heavier weight and handstand walk or bear crawl for the scale division. The men's weight for Diane is 225, women's is 155. And then for the second portion, we're doing 315 and 205. That is for the RX division. And then for the scale division up here, we're doing, it looks like uh, 135 for the men, 95 for the women and then 185 for the men, 135 for the women. So um, let's get into some of the key points because I think this is a really fun workout that we can maxim we can use some tips to maximize our performance on this workout. So some of the key points. For Diane, we want to figure out if we are going to pace Diane or if we're gonna go for it. If you don't think that you're going to get into the second couplet, go for it. This workout is all about how you can, how well, how fast you can do Diane. If you think that Diane is gonna take you in that nine minute range, or you're not gonna be able to pull that heavy barbell in the second couplet, then maximize Diane, do it as fast as you can. If you're gonna make it to the second couplet, and you're gonna be able to get some reps into that workout, or maybe even finish this workout and do it for time, I suggest pacing Diane. Have a plan, have a strategy, Let's pace Diane, make sure that we come out and we have enough in the tank to be able to do the second couplet really, really, really well. For the deadlifts during Diane, I'm gonna break this down into, two, into their own components. So we're gonna talk about Diane and its two movements first, and then the couplet, second couplet and its two movements. So for the deadlifts on Diane, what I want you to think about, especially if you're gonna be pacing it, I want to think about quick reps. I, I, you don't wanna have any time under tension that, you, that is not necessary. So have quick reps, move fast. With that, break it up early. It's not gonna behoove you to stay and hold onto that bar, that time under tension. That's why one, we want quick reps, and two, why we wanna break it up early is we, want, we don't want a lot of time under tension that's gonna fatigue us and make us tired later on. We still have a lot of work left after Diane. So break it up early. But when you do break it up, keep those short breaks. Don't stand around, stand and lollygag around. We're just trying to take a, take a quick second, take a breath, get out from tension, and go again. On the handstand push-ups, practice, practice, practice this new standard. Uh, even on the hand release push-ups for the scale division, practice that. It's a new standard that's new to the open. We haven't dealt with this before. So make sure you play with the new measurement. If you don't know what the measurement is, go to games.crossfit.com. They have a really good video on how to measure from the knuckle to the elbow. You cut that number in half, add it to the height of the athlete. So go look at that. 
it's going to be very helpful, but I need you to practice that movement. I need you to practice that standard. It's going to be really important. It's going to change the way that you do handstand push-ups. So be mindful of that. For your handstand push-ups and your hand release push-ups, have a plan. Don't go in there just kind of blind seeing what's going to happen. Know kind of where your threshold is and how you want to handle that and then move forward with your plan. When writing your plan, know and understand that you cannot take yourself to failure. Don't go to failure on your handstand push-ups or your hand release push-ups. What is a really good indicator of if you should break your handstand push-ups is rep speed. I oftentimes will get into a handstand push-up workout, whether it be strict handstand push-ups or kipping handstand push-ups, and if my kip starts to slow down or just my overall rep speed starts to slow down, it's a very good indicator that I should come down off the wall, get out from tension, get some oxygen back to my muscles, and go again. Getting out from tension can be very good and can save a lot of energy for the second part of this workout. When you're doing your handstand push-ups, have a tight kip. If you have a very big open kip, you're actually using a lot of the musculature in your legs that can actually tire your legs out a little bit more when you get back from the deadlifts. Trust me, I've experienced it. <laughs> um, for the second couplet, there's something that I, that I, there's some things that I want you to think about. First and foremost, if you have gotten to the second couplet, it's time to go to work. This one is now, it's just grunt work. It's who can just grit their teeth and get after it. So, second couplet, go to work. On the deadlifts, make sure you're keeping a tight core. That's gonna be very important if you're gonna do the handstand walks or even the bear crawls, because if you're not keeping a tight core, it's gonna really light up your back. It's really, your posterior chain is gonna be on fire at this point and it can really affect the way that you're able to do bear crawls and the way that you do handstand push-ups. So if you've never done handstand walks with a tired core before or a tired posterior chain, mess around with practicing some uh, uh, handstand push-ups ahead of time just to reiterate the type of the, the form that you wanna have and how you want to approach your handstand push-ups. For the deadlifts, tight core, Use a belt if you have to. Uh, don't be afraid to have a belt on the side. Uh, maybe early on during Diane, you're wearing a belt just to save the core a little bit. But using that belt might be able to save some, some of your core strength to be able to handstand push up a little bit stronger. Don't fail reps. Don't get to the point where you're pulling on the deadlifts so hard that you get to the point where you're at now at failure. Have a plan of maybe how many times you want to break up the hands, the uh, excuse me, the deadlifts on the second round. We're doing 45 deadlifts at a very heavy weight for a lot of people. So have a plan. Maybe during the round of 21, you, you plan on taking three breaks. Maybe the round of 15, you take two, and maybe the round of nine, you take one. Maybe that's five, four, three. Who knows? Have a plan, have a structure on how you want to approach those reps. So when you get into it, you're not going for broke on your first rep and then just standing and looking at the bar. We also don't want to do big sets and then be forced to break, bend over, just stand around waiting to recover. If you, if you want to dictate your breaks, you don't want the weight to dictate your breaks for you. So, have a plan. The handstand walks and the bear crawls. Move from your shoulders, whether it be from the handstand walk or the bear crawl, I don't want you so much to be thinking about like moving your hands as much as I want you to think about pushing through your shoulder, elongating, staying extremely long and streamlined. Pushing through that will save a lot of energy, one in your core and then also in your arms. So be mindful of that. And then when you get onto the other side of the handstand walks, we're gonna go 25 down, 25 feet back for a total of 50 feet. When you get 25 feet, stand up tall, take a big suck of oxygen, and get some oxygen back to your muscles, and then go again. Don't be so frantic that you all of a sudden are out of the oxygen and you get back to the deadlifts and you're huffing and puffing. For the most part, this second couplet, you're just doing 45 deadlifts as fast as possible. 
those, those bear crawls and those handstand walks are going to go really, really fast for a lot of people. So be mindful of that. Be willing to kind of take a quick break, take some oxygen and go again. So when you get back to the deadlifts, you're ready to really hammer those out. So guys, I think this workout is pretty straightforward. I think it's a lot of fun. I think you're going to do really well. If anything, I think the smartest approach is to approach Diane intelligently, pace it, be smart with Diane. So when you get back to the second couplet or when you get to the second couplet, you're going to have plenty left in the tank. When we watch Scott Pancheck and uh, Gervin Carl Goodmanson do this workout live, you saw Scott Pancheck break up those deadlifts during the uh, Diane uh, really early on and it really paid off for him and he was able to have good strong form on the second couplet. So be smart, practice the new standards, play with the movements a little bit ahead of time and then when you get to those second deadlifts, have a tight core. It's gonna help you guys a lot. Then you're gonna have fun with it guys, get after it. Remember, you're mentally tough, you have the courage, you have the strength in you. Do it, have fun, high five some people, enjoy the community. This is the fourth week baby, we only got one more after this. So enjoy it. It's going to be a good rest of the season, guys. We'll see you soon. All right, thanks.